Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! David Cameron has written to his local Conservative Council leader to complain about the cuts to frontline services. Norman Smith, what is going on? Vic, hi. Yeah, you're right. It's uh, not exactly breaking news when an MP writes to his local council to complain about cuts. It most certainly is news when that MP is one D. Cameron, Member of Parliament for Whitney, writing to Oxfordshire County Council to protest at plans for roughly, roughly around £50 million pounds worth of cuts, which will mean, uh, it's thought, maybe uh, cuts to uh, bus services, possibly uh, cuts to uh, daycare centres for the elderly, possibly cuts to library services. So, Mr Cameron has penned a letter to his council to say, hang on a sec, what are you doing? Let's just take a look at some of what he says. Well, he says, <clears throat> this is D Cameron, I was disappointed at the long list of suggestions to make significant cuts to frontline services. And then he goes on, sort of urging them not to go down this road. He says, I hope the county will move cautiously in setting out its budget plans. And, as a sort of final, I don't know whether it's meant to be helpful or whether it's just meant to put the squeeze a bit on the council, he says, I would be happy to initiate further dialogue with advisers in the Number 10 Policy Unit. Well, that prompted a reply from the uh, council leader, Ian Hudspeth. I've got it here. Six-page reply. And <laughs> he's, he's gone through all Mr Cameron's sort of complaints, point by point, trying to rebut them, but he starts with a real zinger. He says... This is to the council leader to D Cameron. I, along with many councillors, worked hard to assist you in achieving a Conservative majority. That's his opening line. And then he goes on, uh, he says here, I cannot accept your description of a drop in funding of £72 million as a slight fall. And he signs off here, I hope that clarifies our position. So I take it Mr Hudspeth is not hugely amused uh, by the PM's intervention, although when he was asked about relations between the two of them last week, he was saying, oh, no, we get on fine. Have a, have a look at this. It's like all relationships. Sometimes you have a little bit of tension. It's always going to be difficult at some stages, but yesterday I was at number 10 Downing Street and we had a very civil conversation. It's, you know, there's a good relationship there, but like all relationships, sometimes there's a little bit of tension. Now, not surprisingly, Vic, as you can imagine, uh, MPs are all saying, hang on a sec, hang on a sec, this is hypocrisy. It's David Cameron's government who are imposing this guts. It's a bit rich for him to be complaining about them. That certainly has been the line being pushed by uh, the Labour Party. This was uh, one of their spokesmen, John Ashworth, on the wireless this morning. Council leaders are having to find very deep cuts in public services. It seems extraordinary that the Prime Minister didn't appreciate the scale of the cuts that would be hitting his own council. But of course, when you move into some of the more metropolitan areas, the city areas and more northern councils, because of the way the funding formula works, they're having to find even deeper cuts. Now, all this has gone in another direction altogether because Labour, maybe trying to milk it, let's be honest, have written to the Cabinet Secretary to complain about Mr Cameron's behaviour and how they say it is a breach of rules around the Ministerial Code of Conduct. Their argument being that by inviting the council boss into number 10 to have a chat with the number 10 policy union. Mr Cameron is sort of blurring the lines between his sort of prime ministerial powers and his job as a local MP. I wonder, will, it, will he have to extend that invitation to all other council leaders then to, to come to the policy unit to discuss how cuts may be rolled out? It's going to be rather busy in number 10 if he does. I think the short answer is no. Um, but, you know, what I kind of think about this is it's kind of a double-edged sword, isn't it, to have the PM in your constituency? Because at one level, it's great. If you're lobbying for something, you want something done, you can get the PM on your side, then, hey, that's a huge, huge boost to your prospects of convincing the Treasury or whoever to stump up the cash. However... If the PM is not happy about what you're doing, then it is a major pain in the derriere because you have the Downing Street sort of machine saying, just think twice about that. So I guess it's a double-edged sword having Mr Cameron as one of your constituents. Thank you very much. I've been getting away.